Today we're working on a 1999 Trans Am that has more leaks than a plumber's nightmare. And today, instead of fixing all of those leaks, we're going to prepare for a thousand horsepower. We have a McLeod twin disc RST clutch that we're going to put in. We're going to tear out the transmission and we're going to go step by step and show you each and every little nut and bolt that needs to be taken out. So we've already got a head start. So one of the things that we have to do is remove the center console which we already have and there's just a couple bolts where you can see right there's two bolts that go right into there and then there's a dust cover for the shifter and I think it was like eight or nine little little seven millimeter bolts but that's the easiest part that literally took like five minutes that ain't nothing let's lift this thing up and let's get the wrenching It's probably easier just to have it hang, yeah. and then we can get the little 10 millimeter or whatever bolt that's on it. Just to kind of go through, we need to pull out the starter, which we already did, and you see all these leaks down here. We're going to try and fix some of those, and then we'll pull out this drive shaft here, just a couple bolts in the back. And we're going to change this rear pinion seal as well while we're at it. And then you got to take off this bar here in order to get the transmission out. Might want to take these guys out just to get them out of the way. And I believe we got some new ones too to go on it. As well as the last piece, take off all your bell housing bolts. Cross member. And then we have up here your slave cylinder connection up there slave cylinder line up there we need to disconnect as well Taking off the torque arm here, the way we're doing it, you, you can do this two ways. You can take the whole thing off from these two bolts here, or we can take them off from here, and then we can slide it out from the bushing, or take the whole bushing out, and that's what we're going to do just for simplicity, so that this thing stays in the same area that it's that it's in the bushing itself. So we got a bolt, we got a nut here, nut here, and then there's one all the way up here, with fingers on it all the way right there and we have one also right here once we get those out we'll be one step closer to getting this transmission out loosen up the bell housing bolts for the transmission then we will take the cross member off and we'll lower this sucker down and We'll get the torque arm out of that at that same time. Transmission bolts that go up to the bell housing, you have two here, one here, on the other side, up here, and then directly above, there's one more. And then at, you go in at a little bit of an angle, a little bit higher up, there's one right here. Let's see if I can get it on the camera. So right there. And again over here, we already got that guy. Should be one right here. Sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes that's a dowel. And then if you go up, and then again, we're going in at a little bit of an angle. And there's one right here. Let's see if I can get it. It's hard to see. But you see my finger right there moving? It's right behind it. To pull this cross member off, we got a bolt here right in the center. And then we have two bolts there, 
two bolts here, and these are 15 millimeters. I don't know what that one is. We'll figure it out. Probably a feels like a 18. We got something fancy here that we've never used before. We're gonna see if it works. Try and do this not on the ground like all the other ones that we've done. I think there's a couple little sensors and stuff that we need to unplug up in there, but we'll figure that out once we drop it down just a little bit. So those few sensors that I was saying that we need to pull, we got one right there, little focus right there. And then we have one right here. You can barely see it. Right here. And there's one right above it, right here. I think that was it. Just three of them. One over here. And then we had a sensor on the passenger side as well. And we should be good, as far as we know, we should be good to come on down. Unless we got something. No, no, no. I think we're good. I think we're good. Something hooked to the shifter or something. I think we're good. So one of the last things that we had to do, we had to take this line off from the master cylinder into the slave cylinder. And you have this little plastic collar on there. And what you do, you just, that's going to be popping out just a little bit in this little hole. And you push that in. And a lot of times, Pete, there's a tool for that. Uh, but we did not have a tool for that. And what we used, What we used is these two little picks and just kind of push one side, push the other one, kind of wiggled it a little bit, push it in, push it in a little bit, and it pulled right out. No tool, no special tool needed. Yeah, you're on the same. Go ahead and pop it. Look at things on there or something. You want to try a wrench? Yeah, or a ratchet. Yeah, where's, where's it? Was it 15? Yeah. yeah. You want to take it off? Whoa! I guess it's coming off. It falls down. Keep going. Almost there. Okay, you're off. There you go. That'd probably be good. Ready? Yeah. Hands out the way. Ah. Ready? Yeah. Just floor it. There you go. All right. Now we got it. Uh, now you got your clip on. Yep. It's on. Oh. Good. Yep. All right. Here oh right no. What? Feel up there. Just put your hand up there. You feel it? No. Okay, good, because there's nothing. <laughs> Damn it. I had a feeling that was coming too. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back up because I saw a drop. Ready? So you might need to take that shifter out. You know what I mean? Something just goes straight back because oh, we get, yeah, I see it. We're, in, we're in the pilot. It's just four bolts. What are they, tens? Probably tens or eights. I'll just go. 
I'll just go pull it out. I'll, I'll jump up there. I'm not going to lower the car or anything like that. Oh, the clutch is red. You know what that means? A cloud or a ram? No, that means we got more, a lot of horsepower in there already. I guess you got this. <laughs> oh yeah, it's got the stock slice on it. Right? Dude, if that one's good, I'll buy that one off of you too. Huh? I said, if that one's good, I'll buy that one off of you too. Yeah. That looks like ram red. It's a darker red than a brighter red like that. Like that? Yeah. We're gonna clear? I think we're clear. Both ends. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> the strap's good. Probably from the rear main seal. Yeah. To all on the yeah. inside of that case. Yep, the all on the inside. Rear main seal, toast. Oh, yeah. This is way worse than the fiber. Way worse. This, this thing's leaking bad. I think. Fiber was. Fiber wasn't terrible. It was pretty bad. <laughs> it was bad, but it was, I don't <laughs> think it was just. No. This thing's leaking bad. Yeah. Now that we got the transmission out, we do have to do the rear main seal. So in order to get that off, we need to take off the bell housing here and the clutch, what's that called, the, uh, the pressure plate and the flywheel. We should be able to get to the rear main seal. In order to get your bell housing out, you have two bolts here. Then you have one here, one right behind this wire loom. Looks like we got one all the way up top, probably over here in the corner somewhere. Hey, look at that. There's another one right there. And then we got one hiding right there, and that should be all of them. the only 15. There's only one 15. That means this thing's probably been off before. <laughs> and uh, somebody lost a bolt. Yeah. Alright, one step closer to the rear main seal. Looks like we just need to take these guys off right there. More Allen keys. I'm so excited about those. To get the pressure plate off of the flywheel and then we need to then there, I think there's like eight, yeah, like I think there's like six or eight bolts that uh, need to come off on the flywheel, and that should be it. Let's get to it. Ah. Ready? A little bit. Okay. I'm good. Oh, turn it. Yep. Right there.
it's not horrible. A little bit of brake clean on that, bring it right back around. Yep. And there's your six bolt. We do believe that is aluminium. So is that aluminum on the outside? Hmm. I don't know. Check it out. So Huh. <laughs> More lever edge. Good? Wow, it's on there. <laughs> they got locked tight on 100%. Go ahead. I'm ready? Oh, yeah. The more leverage you got, the better. We've got the flywheel off now and here is our issue with the rear main seal. It's just sitting here and it's starting to seep out right there, which is kind of typical for these. Just over time, they just they, they don't last forever. That's not good. If this thing had oil in it and the crank was picking up oil, we might see some more all the way around, but definitely right there, not good. So we're going to replace on that and from experience, now we've owned LS's for a long time. Now, here we go. This was on the back of the flywheel. Not good at all. So, like I was saying, we have experience with LS's here for quite a few years. Probably close to a decade, if not more than a decade now. And do not go cheap on these rear main seals. And don't just buy the seal. Buy the whole cover with the seal already installed. And... Again, with our experience, get Chevy Performance. Don't get the cheaper ones. Don't get Dorman. And Dorman, I know, is a lot, a lot of, uh, has a lot of good stuff. But uh, here we go. This is this is the brand new one. Already has new bolts with it. You got alignment, little coupler thing, with the new seal already in it. New gasket, ready to go. All we need to do is pop this off, pop that new one on. And we'll be back in business. Chocolate <laughs> we need to do head gaskets too. <laughs> Isn't it? You don't know that chocolate milk? It's kind of scary. No, it's not because that's exposed. Only this part is in there. Okay. So this is going to get wet from, uh, what do you call it? That's going to get wet from the road. And then you got oil leaking out of here, so you're gonna have a you're gonna have a milkshake mix right there. Uh, I wouldn't be worried about that. My first trim down, when I pulled the dipstick out. Yeah, that's what it looked like. That's what it looked like right there. Dang. We even got a bloody nose. You see the bloody nose right yeah, there. It's not supposed to be leaking there, right? Or is it just because I took the bolt out? You took all the bolts out. No, no, but yeah. it's yeah. still. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be leaking. You have to shimmy it, get a little screwdriver behind it. I could do this good. <laughs> it's the RTV, it's the red of. I just can't get this thing in there. Yeah, just keep rocking, it's coming. 
So there it is. We got the rear main seal off. And what we need to do, we just need to clean this up down here, get rid of all this old RTV, and then we'll, we'll reapply, we'll clean it up, reapply RTV, we'll put the new rear main seal in, and we should be good to go for today. The trick to brake clean is just to use the whole can at one time. Even if it looks clean, you just keep going and, you know, just for security reasons, you know, make sure. And like now that the air, you know, there's no more in there, the air is kind of like helping dry it. You know, definitely waste the whole can for sure. So a step that's commonly missed, and like I said earlier, make sure you put an RTV bead all the way across. And ours is a little thick, that's just for extra security, but it should be okay. If whatever's not needed, it'll get smushed out. It's always a little nerve wracking when you put a new rear main seal on here because you never know. You did all this work just to fix a leak and then you don't know if this is really going to fix it or not. But we got our fingers crossed. We bought the more expensive, the better Chevy Performance rear main seal. And we do have experience with these and these are typically pretty good. We did put our RTV on there. Should be okay. So we'll cross our fingers. I think it'll be all right. So let's get on to the next thing. Let's put the flywheel on. You need a bolt? Yeah. Boat. So there it is. All we have to do is torque down the pressure plate to the flywheel. I believe it's 54 foot-pounds. There it is. Almost all. Make sure you got your alignment tool in there. Should be good. While we're in here, we're going to replace the slave cylinder. This is the original one. Should be okay. And this is a Tick Performance rebuilt uh, T56 as well. So this thing should hold up to some decent amount of power. Now there's not actually nothing wrong with this one here. But just to say, since we're putting this brand new clutch in, let's go ahead and put a brand new slave cylinder. So what we need to do is we need to take this spring off and decompress the whole throw out bearing. And we need to do some measuring and we'll get to that here in just a bit. It's really down at the bottom. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. See it down at the bottom? Oh yeah, there you go. Are you ready for this explanation? It's uh, not an easy explanation. So what we have here is, what we have here is the new slave cylinder throwout bearing put on and we took the spring all the way off and we seated it all the way to the end. And then we put a flat piece right here and then measured to the base of the transmission itself, which the base of the transmission itself is also the same point of this bell housing here so what you need to do is measure from here to the fingers of the pressure plate itself 
and measure from the base of the throwout bearing to the base of the transmission itself. Take those two numbers, subtract them, take those two numbers, subtract them, and see what you get. So here's what we have here, just a little, just a little, uh, just a little drawing here. So let me see if I can try and explain this a little bit. So here's our bell housing right here. And then inside here, this hatch line is our clutch. And just, I, just to show a little bit more detail, I guess, it's not exactly correct, but that's the fingers of the pressure plate. So our number from the edge of the belt, the outside face of the bell housing inside was 2.2. Two, three, four inches. Then also from the same distance from the edge of the transmission, which is also the outside face of the transmission, which is also the outside face of the bell housing. It's the same same distance. And that distance was, or it's the same point. So that distance was 1.925. With those two numbers, you subtract them. So we had 2.2. 3.4 minus 1.925 and that gave us 0 0.309 inches. So that's a little bit more than what we need. We need the gap required is about an eighth of an inch to a little bit more, maybe 3 sixteenths or so. That's definitely over. So what we need to do is grab a shim to stick behind our slave cylinder and throw out bearing and we have one that our shim size was 0 0.12 which is about almost an eighth of an inch so with that being said here's here's a shim right there that just goes right behind there so we took our gap our gap pre shim 0 0.309 minus the shim and that gave us 0 0.189 and that is perfectly fine we are in spec we're in tolerance Hope you get that. Hope you understand that. It's a little difficult. You got to spend some time and make sure you have a caliper gauge. That's all I can say about that. Is that what you got to say? He's got it. After you're done measuring, don't forget to put your spring back on or else you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Okay. grinding gears from here on out. It really doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's a little... <laughs> Just let it go. Doesn't look horrible. There's no metal on it. Is there a magnet on that? Well, there is now. <laughs> Never to be seen again. <laughs> yeah, okay, that does not look very good. In the light, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll go go fishing. Hey, hey, hey. It's cleaner.
just a hair, yeah? So, I don't know. You're going to have to adjust it because it's going to seem like that's way too much. So here we are, we got the transmission all in, and right now we're draining the draining the rear end, changing out the pinion seals, one of the pieces that was leaking. And boy does that smell wonderful. And you can just see the leak all up here. Look at this. All coated, nasty, not good. So pinion seal change. It's just a 32 millimeter bolt, pull that out. And um, not bad change out the seal but this here I see a lot of people on the forums asking my transmission stuck it won't go in I can't get it to go in well what we had to do ours would not go in it would go into about probably about an inch or so and then we, just, we had to actually get a couple longer bolts I know you're not supposed to do that but that's what we had to do we got a couple longer bolts here I think their size Oh, what size were they? Where's your little thing at? Oh, Extra uh, bolts. There it is, there right here. There you go. The size is M10 by 1.5. And I think we got like 80 millimeter and 60 millimeter and 40 millimeters. And we just slowly just went side to side, just slowly brought it in, slowly brought it in. And then once we got close enough to where we can put the stock bolts in, we put those guys in and uh, in the process I think we lost a couple bolts so we had to replace two of them or one may have been missing already I don't remember but that's that it's all buttoned up in there we just need to get a new o-ring for the master cylinder going into the slave cylinder and then we have this bleeder valve here that we can bleed the clutch it's a speed bleeder but uh, not so speedy we have the torque arm all torqueized in there. And we have the drive shaft still out because we are doing the pinion seal right now. And that's about it. So we did a little bit off camera and that's okay. Got your cross member in here as well. And that's it. So let's get to doing this. Here we are, we're at the last couple steps here. We got a new clutch in, new flywheel. We have a new pinion seal and yoke seal. So now all we have to do is put this beautiful MGW shifter in and bleed the clutch and we should be good to go. Crossing our fingers, it's a lot of money, a lot of work, a couple days on this here. Been taking our time with it, making sure we're doing everything right, but should be okay. So, on the last couple steps here. Fart can! You got a fart can? One thing with the MGW shifter, you have to put RTV all the way around. Uh, why? Ah! Uh. Make sure you got all your sensors plugged in before you put your center console back on or else you'll be just like us. There you go. 
Now you got your burnout button. Alright, almost done here. Just like that. MGW shifter put in. Only took like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Only took like 15 minutes. That wasn't bad. Really easy. A couple bolts. Helps that the shifter was already out of it. But uh, yeah, just make sure you use your RTV. Grease up the little, little coupling thing. And good to go. So the last piece that we did was that we took this speed bleeder here. And we pump the clutch up about 10, 15 times, and then you crack this valve open, and then it's almost like bleeding your brakes. A little bit of clutch fluid will come out. Make sure you don't do this up here because then you'll have this right here. You'll, I mean, that stuff will clear, that stuff will peel paint like crazy. So whoever the previous owner was did it up here. We actually took this line all the way out underneath the car, and we drug it out about right there. And you do want it above if you can. You do want it at the highest point because all the air is going to go to the top, right? So once it gets to the top, pump the clutch a couple times, pop this open, close it immediately, just like bleeding brakes. And do that about three or four times, and you should be good to go. After, I think, the first time that we, we popped it open, we really started feeling uh, pressure. But don't be scared. So when you first push the clutch in, it's going to go all the way to the floor, and it's not going to come back up. You just got to bleed it. Real easy, takes a few minutes. 11 millimeter wrench, it goes on there and I think I used a vice grip for that. So, and then I had the other guy in there pumping the clutch, pop it open, good to go. Now, we actually have clutch feel. You can see, it's pretty good. A little squeaky, but it's good. So after that, I think we're going to wrap it up. We're going to call it a day. And if you guys like videos like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy.